I had no idea that Dave likes to black the audience out. So the lights are set in a certain way that you don't see the audience when you walk out. Normally when you do a talk show, the audience is visible from the stage. The stage is in the Ed Sullivan Theater. The set is set back very deep on the stage and, and, and you don't see the audience. So anytime the audience laughed, it would come from a void and it did freak me out. Huh. And I was given that heads up. Don't get freaked out by it. But you would, it, it was as boom, it would come from an abyss. Uh, and then, of course, being in the Ed Sullivan Theater and sitting across from David Letterman, man, my God. Were you satisfied with your appearance? I was thrilled that I got out unscathed. Nice. And, but I was happy, you know, and uh, the Stangles, who were the long time, the longest ever running uh, head writers of the show, they, they told me, listen, we wouldn't tell you this, <laughs> but otherwise, but, you know, you did well. So I'll take it from them. And it's a lifetime memory a lifelong memory of mine to have appeared on, on, on The Late Show with David Letterman. Bill Carter wrote The Late Shift. He is, uh, he is as knowledgeable on this subject as anybody else, and I'm pleased to have him back on The Rich Eisen Show. Bill, thanks for calling in. I'm, I'm sure you're being pulled in many different directions today. Well, it's great to talk to you, and that's a great anecdote. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bill, I, I'll never forget it. And I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to be on that show desperately for many years. I mean, and, and Dave... Uh, that would come back. Dave's a fan. Dave is, but Dave, uh, you know, uh, wanted to talk about the lockout. That's a, that. There's one positive about covering the lockout. That might be the fact <laughs> there that you go. that was it. You know. <laughs> um, so what? Where? I'll just give you the floor on a day like today. It, it's exciting, but it's also sad. I don't know what emotions to feel. How? How about you, Bill? Well, I, I can't help but feel really nostalgic. I'm, I'm here uh, at the theater, and uh, I'm watching the crowd assemble, and I was here in 1993, the day that he started, uh, on a hot August afternoon with a guy from Minnesota having carved Dave's head in a, in a big pile of butter uh, <laughs> that was melting in the, in the street. It, it was, you know, and so I can't help but think back and, and all the things that have occur occurred, and you know, I've seen thousands of these shows, thousands of these shows. I'm sure thousands. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's part of your, your sort of life, and you realize one of the interesting things about Dave is that his life played out on the, on the air in ways that very few hosts have ever done. Everything from his, you know, heart disease to the 9-11 speech to his sex scandal to his child being born, everything was out there, and that's why you really felt connected to the guy. Bill Carter joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think he's going to do tonight? He hasn't announced anything. And uh, as, uh, as Norm MacDonald mentioned at the end of his uh, wonderful set on Friday night, that Dave is not a fan of the mawkish was the word right. that he used. What do you think Letterman is going to do tonight in his final broadcast, Bill? Well, it's very interesting, I think, because, you, you know, it's set up the way Carson went out. You have... Uh, the guests until the last night, and then no guests are announced. Now, I do know he's going to have the Foo Fighters on mm -hmm. uh, playing at the end because he loves that band and he loves hard rock. He'd like to blow the roof off the joint one last time. Um, but I suppose he's going to talk and, and reminisce in some way. I, I, I kind of think he won't go for a lot of sentiment. It seems to me the shows he's done this week, the two shows he's done this week with guests, you would think he would really want to have some memorable moments, but have been not sentimental at all. In fact, the opposite. And it seems like he's been pushing that away. So uh, I, I, I think it's uh, up to him to do something really interesting and memorable. And, you know, I'm sure he will. Bill Carter, author of uh, The Late Shift, uh, The War for Late Night, joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. How would this have been different if NBC had made the decision to go with Letterman Boy. back in the day, Boy. Bill? Uh, you know, there's so many things to think about in that what if, because obviously we wouldn't be in New York doing it. For one thing, it would be in L.A. probably. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm of the opinion that in order to take on The Tonight Show, the franchise of The Tonight Show, you needed a giant star to really establish a new beachhead, and that's what Letterman did. And had NBC given the show to Dave, and CBS then tried to hire Jay, I think Jay would have had a really, really, really hard time establishing a show against Letterman, who was a powerhouse when he moved to 1130. And it might never have been established. But, of course, what NBC would argue, and they're right, one of the reasons they didn't take Dave was that Dave is not controllable. Dave does his own thing, and they were uh, uncomfortable with that. And I think there would have been friction all along, a lot of friction. 
So it would have been really hard to see how that would have played out and would Dave have lasted, you know, another 20-plus years. I, that That's really a big question. Yeah, I mean, and Dick Ebersole, who was given the Sports Business Journal a Lifetime Achievement Award this week, said, um, reiterated that, that, that Dave couldn't beat Jay in a fair fight and that Jay was a juggernaut and, and defended the decision to this day, essentially, Bill. It's interesting how... How what's this is really interesting about that, Rich, is that at the time, Dick Ebersole was the one arguing not to do that. He was arguing to give the show to Dave because he thought Dave was the bigger star. Um, but look, I, I said this uh, in various ways over the past couple of days being interviewed about this. You can't argue with Jay's success. Jay wanted to go out there and win, and he did. So Jay got the ratings, but he never got the impact. Dave had the impact. That's why you're seeing this outpouring of reaction because he was a cultural phenomenon. He just he wasn't a ratings winner. He was a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, Kimmel, and that's a big difference. Yeah, Kimmel's going dark tonight, Bill, and he had a very moving he segment sure last yeah. night where he choked up and showed photographs of himself throughout his life having a late night license plate and a birthday cake yeah. surrounded by his family when he was a teenager that said yep. late night on it and and he choked up he cried and he did he he did it's, it's 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 been a thing in his life really a big thing in his life that you know this guy influenced he 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 spent his life as a kid so, you know, wanting to see this show. And by the way, Conan O'Brien is in the same boat. <laughs> Both those guys, enormously influenced by him. And by the way, if you continue, you can, you can mention almost every comic of that generation. It's all about Dave. I mean, that's what I mean by in influence. And I, and I don't take anything away from Jay. I think he did a terrific job for them. But they don't talk about Jay that way. It, it, it's a totally different thing. Jay was, you know, a performer on the show. And as I said, Dave was a, a guy who had enormous impact on the culture. Yeah. And um, so what do you think is next for, for Dave? What do you think is next? Well, you know, I think that's a really tough thing because there are more outlets now. When Carson stepped down, you know, would he do another television show? It's really hard to say you're going to do another television show after the Tonight Show or after this show. But... You know, Dave could do something online. He's got a lot of interests. He's got, you know, varied interests. And he, he's a guy whose, you know, mind works in fascinating ways. But he also is geared down a lot. He is really geared down. I mean, I think he's done the last few years of the show as though he was on, you know, the porch in a rocking chair. You know, he, he's really slowed down a lot. And I think the main thing is when you stop doing this, if you're a guy like this, you will miss the hour on that stage, like he, he, you cannot predict because, you know, an hour a day, some people, uh, a crowd of people loved you and laughed at you and embraced you. And that's a drug. And, and, and you get high from that. And you come down from that, it's going to be a tremendous withdrawal when you don't have that in your life at all. So, it, you know, it, it can be tough to handle. It was very, very tough for Carson to handle. But you know the story about how he wound up writing, you know, monologues and reading them over the phone to his old producer, mm. right? Because he was that at sea. And, and then the producer said, well, why don't you send these jokes to Dave? And he was like, oh, I can't do that. And finally he did, and Dave would use one of the jokes, and Johnny would be incredibly excited. Dave used one of my jokes. This is Johnny Carson. Because, and, and you know, he would get me thrilled. He'd get a $75 check for his joke being used on the air. <laughs> You know, it's important. It's important in their lives, and you cannot, you know, stop that. When when you stop that, it's going to be a big change. And so, I, I Dave is prone to you know a little bit of depression and stuff. And and he, you know, he's had bouts of self-loathing his whole life. I'm very happy he has a, his son. That's a very big thing for him. But I think it's going to be a huge challenge for him. Bill, last question for you with Bill Carter, author of uh, The Late Shift, longtime media reporter for The New York Times, joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Jimmy Fallon uh, is, is not even 40 yet. Uh, Kimmel, relatively young man. He's, he's a, I, I believe we're the same age. Uh, Colbert, who's taking over early 50s. Um, will we see this again? Because these guys, I mean, I, I, you can't, th Fallon's going to be there for a long time. Seth Meyers, yeah. these guys. Will we see, though, an outpouring of affection and reminiscing like we are today, again, for a late-night show. I host. don't think so. I don't think so. Because you, one thing is a lot of them. So the audience is, you know, set, is broken down into pieces. But also, none of these guys is going to be the man for a generation of comics. It's just not going to happen. For a generation of comics and a whole young audience, 
the way Dave was. And Dave just reinvented the form. He reinvented it. It was all him. And all these guys owed that to him. So it'll be hard for me to see, see that. Interestingly, the one name you didn't name who is going to get an interesting yeah, John Stewart is John Stewart. Yep. Yep. I and mean, that will be kind of interesting. That's happened, coming up really fast. But John Stewart has, in his own way, been a gigantic force too. Uh, although I think even he would say, you know, not on this level. Dave is, Dave is up there. It's you know. I know that, but John Stewart is like, iconic. Who's, who's bigger than Dave? I know that you're right, and he would say that too. But John Stewart's iconic, Bill. I mean, that's a, no question. No, and, I, and I'm agreeing with that. I'm totally saying he's sure. iconic. I do, I do think so. But I, I, I think it, there's something that Letterman coming up when he did, coming along when he did, and the number of people, and, and John Stewart himself, you know, paid tribute to him. I mean, I, I think Dave is going to be remembered more than any of these other guys. Bill, thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. I'd love to have you back on as soon as possible to talk more about this, certainly as, the, as that John Stewart departure approaches, as you just pointed out. All right, well, it's great to talk to you, Rich. Thank you. That's uh, Bill Carter. Uh, at W.J. Carter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.